Hey everybody, my name is Jaren, and welcome to I on Design. Now pardon the very cheesy intro, but this is Class with Jaren, and I feel as, as the teacher in this class, I have the right to entertain myself in that way. With a cheesy intro, it works. Anyway, today on I on Design, we are going to be talking about dark UX. Now dark UX is something that the term at least has been around for a little bit, but people talk off and on about it, though I think it's something that's very important to talk about and to address. First off, UX. What is UX? UX stands for user experience, and this is the experience that a user gets when they are typically using a website or an app, but I, personally I use it for everything, the user experience when opening a refrigerator or a door, anything. It, it carries over in real life as well. But it was originated, the term pretty much came from the user experience in websites and apps. Now what dark UX is, dark UX is the act of the designer using the user experience to deceive the user. So by modifying the environment or that website or the app, they deceive the user into trying to get them to do something that they wouldn't normally do. This may sometimes even come to the point of phrasing something so poorly that the user gets confused and doesn't know whether or not to check a box because the phrase is so poorly made. Now there are some real life examples. It's a little bit difficult to point them out. I feel a lot of times I would find it at a carnival with the person trying to sell me a teddy bear or something very deceitfully trying to weasel money out of me. I would say that's a, a dark user experience, but there are other ones specifically that I could think of very clearly. Parking structures, for example. How many times, at least for me, um, I've had to go into a parking lot and couldn't find the pricing anywhere until I was so far in that it was too late for me to back up. I can't back up, I can't leave, I just have to pay the price. That's, that's what it costs. I would say that's a dark user experience. It's a, it's a way that that companies and individuals or whatever try and manipulate you in order to get what they want. There are a lot of digital examples about this as well. You can go to a website and add something to your shopping cart and start going through the payment process and the entire time you have no idea what the product costs because it won't say anywhere on the site. Until the very last page they show the price and then they add some additional fees. This is so frustrating to the user. I know me, I've experienced it, and I'm sure many of you have as well. Which is why so many times people are very happy with a service like Amazon, because they don't often try and get the user to do this. Other times you will see a pop-up window or just a, a list of buttons, and they're in a different orientation than you would expect or a pop-up window has an okay and cancel button, and when they really don't want you to leave the website, they switch it around and change the colors to make it look like you should just click the cancel and go back to their site. It's dark UX. It's meant to deceive the user into staying on that site, into buying more, into spending more than they'd like to, or and that, that, that could be money or time. And some of the most despicable ones are when you see ads that specifically target your operating system and make it look like, hey, there's a pop-up window that you just need to click OK on. And in reality, it's actually just a website on a browser that will try and download a virus. Now, dark UX isn't inherently evil, but it does for some reason tend to leave a pretty bad taste in your mouth. For example, I've used GoDaddy for a very long time. I used to buy all of my domain names there. I used to pay for either domain name protection or not protect it at all and have all my public information out there. And they would always try and get more money from me. I had, at some point, I probably had 35 websites, just domain names that I picked up. They're $12, you know, I thought I'd use it for this project or this project. And a lot of them I did, I still have them but they would always try and get me to pay for 10 years ahead of time. So they'd try and charge me a two, like $200. Or they would say, you get the first year at $1.99. And then when I get to my cart, I find that it's only $1.99 if I pay for five years. And then each other year is $10 or $15. It was intentionally meant to deceive me every single time. And that was very frustrating for me as a user. I lost trust in them because I couldn't even trust their website. When a better option finally came along, even though there were likely very better options from the beginning, um, I, I quickly jumped ship. I'm using Google Domains now, which is a much more simpler user interface and really convenient. 
But ultimately, the lesson learned is if a user feels deceived by a website, they're going to feel deceived by that company. And you see this a lot of times with Facebook. Whenever Facebook made a big user interface change, people went bonkers. Nowadays, they're kind of used to it. They've just accepted that that's how it works. But people don't often trust Facebook. They don't talk about how they're, they're putting their trust in Facebook or how they're not worried about their privacy or anything. Most people use it with the recognition that oh, they're kind of just trying to get at me in another angle. A company is responsible for that trust between the company and its users, and Dark UX does not aid that. But one of the reasons Dark UX may be necessary sometimes is because of compromise. Many times a company has to have a certain quota in order to continue. For example, let's say we have a website that offers information for free and they need to acquire new users in order for some users to pay for a subscription and for their site to keep running. But if they don't acquire new users, they're going to have to shut down. So what they need to do is acquire a certain amount of users each month in order to continue. Now, if people are just going on and clicking and scrolling and finding the information and then leaving as quickly as they came, they're not going to subscribe and that site's going to have to shut down. So that website may set up a little pop-up beforehand that says subscribe now to see the answer. Now that's not inherently dark UX, but what it does is obstruct the user from information in order for that site to continue running. So there are situations where it may be deemed necessary for the company to continue or for that website to continue functioning as normal. Now it's very tough to put a line where dark UX begins and just general terms and conditions apply to user experience. For example, Facebook and most social networks have a way of keeping their users in their app. For example, let's say you have a video and you wanna share it with your friends. You have a couple of different options. Most people would probably upload it to YouTube and then post that link to their Facebook wall and share it with their friends. Facebook's not going to promote that video. They're gonna do whatever they can to keep that video as hidden as possible. So maybe a couple of friends will see it, your best friends but the general population of your friend group will not see it. Now, let's say you upload that video directly to Facebook. Oh, they will promote that to Kingdom Come because they know if people are watching content on their site, they're going to stay on the site. So they'll share that with everyone. And this goes even farther with web pages. If someone shares a link to a website, Facebook doesn't promote that because they don't want people to see content that will take them away from their website. Now, if you post a link to something that's written right on Facebook, on a Facebook page or something, it will be shared and it will become more popular. Now, this is just a general understanding. This is kind of how companies need to work. They recognize, and most people recognize, that you need to keep users using your service in order for it to have value, in order for it to continue operating. But there is a point where it gets a little bit concerning. Now, for instance, if you want an article to be read by a lot of people, you're most likely going to be successful by going through Facebook's advertising system and designing the article to be read by Facebook users. Then when you're scrolling through Facebook, that article will be automatically downloaded, all the images will be ready, and you'll be able to interact with it differently than you would just a website. Sometimes you can see that by clicking on a link and it loads right away, and then you can scroll through images and even rotate around and see a 3D picture. That kind of stuff is right in Facebook, and that's great, but what it does is make Facebook the default, and it keeps people from leaving that. Again, there are ups and downs. There's no definitive line of if this is right or wrong or not, but I feel like it's something that people should be made aware of. People should know that when they're going to use a service, that service is fighting for your attention. They are fighting for you to be advertised to. And this is in general a good reminder for people to know that when you are using a service, that service typically uses you as the product. And it isn't wrong, necessarily. That's why we use those services, because they still benefit us way more than they do hurt us. But they are still trying to weasel into your life and get in there somehow so that they can make money off of you. Now, I'm a user interface and user experience designer. I understand how this works, and I also know that it's sometimes a necessary evil if you can use that word, but it is your job as the user, as the product of that company to be aware of this 
and to make sure that you stay on top of it at all times. If a company steps over a line and they make it something that is actually wrong, you need to be aware of that and you need to call them out on it. And just because they missed up doesn't mean they're suddenly evil. It just means that they need to keep in check and they need to measure their boundaries. They need to recognize the relationship between you, the user slash product, and them, the company who provides that experience. Personally, I think one of the most important things to remember is just because you see content on Facebook or YouTube or Twitter or Instagram or anything doesn't always mean it's the best information for you to be seeing. There's often a lot better information out there that they're not showing you because it's on someone else's site. They want you to stay where you are. It's not always wrong, but it's always a little deceitful. In the coming years, we're going to be living in an increasingly connected world, and dark UX is going to be talked about a lot more, and it's going to be our jobs to find out where the line is between acceptable dark UX and completely unacceptable dark UX. There's a lot more coming, so if you want to stay tuned, you should subscribe to my channel, and you should also click the little bell icon to stay notified. And I hope this doesn't count as dark UX, but if you aren't already, you should subscribe to my newsletter, because I'll be sharing a lot of information about design work that I'm working on, and behind the scenes information about videos in my newsletter. Check it out. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you guys next time on Class with Jaren.